Hello everybody, this is Captain Fish, and today we're going to go over installing SDL2 on Windows with Visual Studio Code and WSL2. So there are a couple requirements that we need before we can get started. So first you'll need to have a copy of Visual Studio Code installed. Um, so I have that here, and we'll go over some of the requirements that we need later on in that. Uh, you'll also need Windows Terminal and your favorite Linux distribution. Uh, I'm using Ubuntu and this is Windows Terminal. I guess you technically don't need Windows Terminal, but it's a little bit nicer than just the uh, distribution terminal. Uh, and then we'll also need WSL2 installed on your system. So to check this, if you have that, you can go WSL-L-V. And so here I have my Ubuntu is running version two. If you don't have this, then you can go ahead and update and, um, or you can install WSL uh, from their from Microsoft's install page, and it should be pretty simple, self-explanatory. There's lots of tutorials on that. Uh, if you have WSL1 on your system, then there are also steps on here. Uh, however, I found that there were some things that were lacking, and I had a few issues with that. So I'll quickly go over a couple things I noticed when I was trying to upgrade from WSL1 to WSL2. So there's a couple features you need to enable, and they have commands for that. Um, and then you also, there are a couple build requirements for your system. Um, and then you'll need to install this Linux kernel package. Um, you can just install that and run it and set that up. And then, um, so there are a couple features that they have you ask you to install here. So what we can do is we can look at these turn windows features on or off. And the features that I made sure that I had to, some, some of them I had to go back and enable manually, but these are all the ones they talk about are Hyper-V management tools and Hyper-V platform. You'll also need Windows subsystem for Linux installed and as well as the um, virtual machine platform. Uh, and make sure that all those boxes are checked. And if it asks for a reboot, if you have to check any of those, just go ahead and do that. And then after that, you should be able to come back here and set the default version or set your current version to version two. And that should take the upgrade so that you can have this, which will be a requirement. One of the issues I did run into with uh, trying to upgrade was I had a couple packages that I needed to get rid of. So if you have any issues, these were two of the packages that I had to remove from my current distribution. And um, once I removed those, then I was able to do it. You also make sure that you enable um, virtualization in your BIOS uh, because that will be also necessary. All right, so once you have all those requirements met, we can go ahead and start setting up SDL2 in our system. So first we'll go into our um, terminal. We will run this command. So we're gonna get, we're gonna install SDL2 dev, uh, graphics dev, and image dev. You technically don't need image dev immediately, but uh, these two are definitely gonna be important and this one will probably, uh, you'll probably need up to end up installing it anyways. So let's just go ahead and make sure we have that. I typed my password wrong. Okay, there we go. So now we have those three installed. They were already installed on my system. Uh, another package that we'll need installed is the uh, G++ package. Obviously, you need some sort of C++ compiler. And as well as I like to be able to debug with Visual Studio Code. Um, and you need GDB to be able to do that. So let's go ahead and install those. Again, they're already installed on my system. The other thing I wanted to mention with the packages is there are a lot of good packages that you can um, install. Like, for example, this was a, uh, a falling brick game that I was going to go uh, clone onto my system and here's a list of different packages that they use so you know if you don't have git or build essential which comes with a lot of different things um, those might be packages that you're interested in installing as well as here's a couple more sdl2 packages that i'm currently not using but you may need in the future um, so keep an eye out for those all right so once we have all of our packages installed we need some way for sdl to output the graphics to our windows system because SDL will be running on the Linux kernel in WSL. So one way we can do this is by installing a, um, a Windows X server. And so we can use VCX server. Um, and so go ahead and download that and install that. All right, so once you have that installed, then we can go ahead and run that. So we can go to X launch and launch that app. We can just go ahead and select whichever one you prefer, but I'd just do multiple windows. Um, start no client. And then here are a couple options that we get. So I'm going to leave these as are, 
I'm going to leave native OpenGL, um, and there's a way we'll need to export this libg always indirect, and then I'm also going to disable access control. Uh, so then we can go next. You can save this configuration, and so we can save this configuration to somewhere we want, and let's say just like here, I can save that as config.launch, and then um, we could run that with a, with a simple command later on, which will be useful. All right, so once we've launched the uh, Windows X server, uh, we can see it's running right here. Then we'll need a couple of configuration settings in your uh, RC profile. So I'm running bash, and so I'll need to edit my uh, bash RC file. So we'll go ahead, go to the bottom of that file, um, and we're right down here. And so then we'll need to insert these four lines. So I'll have these in the description, but essentially we are uh, exporting the display and then this was that thing that the X server Windows X server was asking us to install and then we'll also need a runtime directory so we don't get a warning later on and then set the runtime level to three all right so once you have those save that one other thing to take note of here in my bash RC file is I have this uh, alias just called X launch you can name it whatever you want but this will just go and look for this uh, this VCX server um, and then it'll run this xlaunch.exe with run, and then I point it to my configuration file um, that I set up when I when we saved that configuration file. And so then you can just go through and just run xlaunch on the terminal. All right, I forgot to mention, we will also need to uh, refresh that uh, bash rc file. So make sure to just run that before you continue. And that's just something I have on my system. You shouldn't see that. All right, so we have a couple more things that we need to do in with Visual Studio to make every to get the setup working, um, but let's go ahead and just clone a game um, from a GitHub repository. So this is one. It's just a falling brick game. Um, it's on this uh, Amino SBH. Uh, so we'll go ahead and copy that, and we'll say git clone that into falling brick game. We'll move into falling brick game. Okay, so we'll also need CMake because this project uses that. So we can go ahead and sudo apt install cmake type in password right that time um, so i already have that one and so then we can so now we're in this falling grip brick game so let's go ahead and open up uh, visual studio code so once we're in visual studio code we'll see the different files that are in this one so um, i believe in visual studio code you'll also need to be using the uh, remote development uh, uh, i believe it's up here um, this remote development uh, extension. Um, so once you have that, then you should be good. And then the other, the last thing that we need is to do, uh, we'll hit control shift P and then we'll do open, open settings. And we'll do this open settings JSON in WSL Ubuntu. Um, and so then here we need to add this line so that we get the correct includes for the SDL2 library. Um, so go ahead and add cc++ default dot include path and then user include sdl2 um, so that will allow us to actually use this include path um, as well you will need to note that any games you do install let's say um, yeah so this one is going to have sdl.h however uh, our system is going to uh, um, because we're using a linux system it's actually going to be looking for um, SDL2 slash SDL2, SDL.h. And so then we can go ahead and follow the instructions here, which say to make directory build, cd build. All right, so we built it. It correctly built everything. So we'll go ahead and make. Now we've made that game, and now we can just do dot dot. We're following the game. And there we go, here's our game running, and uh, we can play it and just use it like normal. Um, so we'll go ahead and exit out of that, we don't need to play the whole game. Uh, but so now we can essentially use Visual Studio Code to do all of our development, uh, and WSL2 has everything that we need for SDL. All right, so that should be everything you need to get started uh, using Visual Studio Code and SDL.
um, I do have a little bit of additional uh, footage here of me going through a simple project I made and we'll look at how to use the debugger in Visual Studio Code. If you're interested in that, stick around and we'll go through that. So we'll go ahead and open that in Visual Studio Code. Um, and you can see it's just a really simple project. Uh, we don't have a lot going on in here. Um, we'll maximize that. So it's just very basic, draws a picture to the screen and that's pretty much it. Um, I do have a couple extra files in here though in VS Code, a launch and tasks JSON, so that that allows me to essentially just start and debug. And so I have this um, set up so that I can run the program and here comes the window. So the window, you know, it goes through, it pauses here and I get to see the outputs, I can modify those. Um, I find this helpful at times. Um, and so then, you know, I can step over this and then we'll just draw to the screen, do the next step, and then do one more step, and then you know the screen has now taken this update window surface, and you can see my beautiful drawing here, uh, just testing a couple things out. Um, so then you're able to use this debugging feature of Visual Studio Code, and it works perfectly with uh, with Visual or with SDL2, um, which is I thought was a very helpful feature. So you'll need this launch JSON file, um, and so essentially you can just create a normal launch JSON file have it run this with your debug command. Um, and then I have a pre-launch task set here. You should be able to keep most of the other settings as normal. Um, and then I have this pre-launch task called debug build. So you might be like, what is a debug build? Well, in my tasks JSON file, then I created a label that says debug build. And it calls a command, which is make fresh debug, which if we go and look in my make file, I have a fresh debug command, which just calls a make clean, clear the screen, and then run debug, which is just building all my object files with my uh, debug flags, which is dash G. And so if you have that set up like I do, then you're able to just run and start debugging, and it'll clear, compile a new, a fresh copy, and then uh, begin your debugging, and then it'll hold for a couple seconds. Oh yeah, there's my other drawing. So yeah, nothing special. All right, well, that's all I have. So I hope that was helpful to be able to set up SDL with uh, Windows subsystem for Linux and then be able to debug in Visual Studio Code. So let me know if you have any questions uh, in the comments below and uh, thanks for watching.